And now, Journey to Success with Pete Asmus. Tonight, mindset to action steps and everything in between. We are about you, focusing on what you need to get to that next level. So get ready, get excited, because we are about to get started. From coast to coast, your host, Pete, the visionary pit bull, Asmus. There we go, right? I've got to have some kind of lead in. So welcome, everybody. Tonight is May 4th, um, 2014. I am your host, Pete Asmus, and this is Journey to Success, and I wanted to welcome you guys. Tonight's going to be an awesome um, webinar. We're going to talk all about consistency, which is absolutely one of my favorite topics, because when it comes to success, consistency is where it's at. It's all about consistency, who you are. The, the reality is... When people say, I want to work with somebody that's amazing, that's not really what they really mean to say is I want to work with somebody that's consistent, consistently good, consistently accurate, consistently on time, consistently whatever it is. When we think about the best people in our lives, like, oh my gosh, they are awesome at that. Well, what does that mean? What is what does being awesome at something mean? Let's take basketball, right? Can we all hit a basket? Absolutely. Even Sean can shoot a basket, right? Um, we can all shoot a basket. We can even hit a basket from a free throw line, or I'm sorry, from the half court, right? We could do an overthrow, an, an overhand throw. We could, we could, we could do it underhand. And if we had enough opportunities and attempts, we would make it. Now, the difference though between us and a professional basketball player is the fact that they make it a lot more often than we do. They are consistently making the basket. They are consistently blocking a shot, making a pass, making a play. They're consistently doing their part, whatever that part is. We could all do that part sometimes, maybe even most of the time. But when we talk about somebody that's really at the top of their game, when we talk about somebody that's really successful, they're doing it 95 to 98% of the time. Now, baseball, you can take it to another whole nother level, right? You can go to baseball and we're looking at what a batting average of 300 or 350 is considered like amazing. And that means that somebody that's hitting the ball three times out of, out of 10 is considered really good. So what I want you to take from that is consistently consistency can vary. It can vary what it means in a specific um, topic. But the reality is what consistency means is being able to do the same thing over and over and over. Being able to get the same result every time. That's consistency, right? It's you putting out the same amount of effort consistently. It's you saying hi every day to that same person. They're just like, man, every day I see them. They're always saying hi. It's because you're consistent. It's because you repeat it. You do it over and over and over again. And that's what's going to build success. So when we talk tonight, um, I, I love the fact that that consistency is here because it's so easy. You know, I've I've even <laughs> recently I've heard people say, you know, things like, oh, well, you know, raw, raw stuff isn't really all about that. You're right. Raw, raw stuff isn't anything. That means you get excited for two seconds and then you go back and you're not excited anymore. Being positive, staying at this high level of positive. That isn't rah-rah. That's consistently seeing the world for better than it is. It's consistently looking for opportunities and ways to create opportunities. It's about really seeing what you can do and believing in yourself. And so today I'm excited to talk about consistency. I'm excited to, to also, I, I know I've got some of my, my people on here that, that, um, that love to, to ask questions and that want to talk about what they're doing in, in the challenge because we've been doing the challenge now for a little over a month, it seems like. Um, actually, it doesn't seem like it is. And so I'd like to hear from some of you guys that, that have been doing it because I know I'm seeing the results on Facebook. And I want, I want to hear you guys say it because I know you guys will be able to inspire other people as well that are interested in getting into it and thinking, oh, well, maybe it's not for me. And we'll go into a little bit more about maybe some of the things that are holding you back and why they're holding you back. And ways that you can actually go around that, overcome it. Um, because at the end of the day, you should want your dreams to be out there. I mean, in order to accomplish your dreams, they've got to be out there. 
If your dream is to have the best house in the world, that means some people are going to be able to see that house at some point, right? If it's to, to you know, give back more than anybody else, whatever it is, whatever your dream is, it's going to take more than just you to get there. That's the bottom line. And so the more people that actually know about it, the more people can help you get there. And that's part of what the challenge is. That's part of what it's all about because when you're going after your goals, you've got to be letting people know what you're doing. You've got to let people know where your goals are. Are they going to be the same every day? No, they're going to change because you're going to change. As you get older, as you, as you develop new relationships, all of a sudden somebody's going to come into your life that's going to bring a different type of opportunity that you never thought of before. And you're going to be able to utilize that information and put it together over here with your information. And all of a sudden, you, you have a brand new ex fat that you didn't have before, right? So it's about, it's about, man, success is about relationships. It's about connecting with people. You, you, there is no way for you to accomplish what you really want to accomplish in life all by yourself. You've got to have people around you. Not just people, though. It's got to be people that you know, like, and trust. You've got to have excellent people around you. Look, there is no reason, if we know the power of 10, right? And we talk about the power of 10. And we're going to say, okay, well, the power of 10 is the 10 people around me. In fact, here, I'll, we'll talk about the power of 10 in a second. Let's go forward real quick. Let's get on to, um, we're, we're in Journey to Success. Uh, this right here, this series that we're doing right now is Force Your Dreams into Reality. Um, and we do that Sundays at 6 p.m. Journey to Success is every Sunday at 6 p.m. No matter what, it's every Sunday at 6 p.m. Every Sunday, 6 p.m. The only reason it's not on a Sunday at 6 p.m. because this is number 53 right now is because I'm on a plane. Other than that, I do I do it. I don't care what day it is. I'm going to do Journey to Success because that's my that's my commitment to you. And I love that tonight it's all about consistency. Because look at what I've been doing consistently. Every Sunday, I deliver this. Every Sunday, I reach out. And, and every Sunday, you know, there's people all over right now. They're going to tell you, I don't have time. 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 There's going to be people all around you that when you ask for help, they're giving you less than they promise. Less. I tell you that we'll do an hour webinar every week. I don't think my webinar has ever been an hour. They're typically anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours long. Not because I'm holding information back, because I'm giving more, because I'm sharing more, because I'm doing more. So if I'm willing to give all this up, if I'm willing to do this much more for you, what are you doing for you? Are you in the challenge? Are you part of the challenge? Have you joined Pete Asmus's 21-day challenge? It's all about goals. That whole challenge is about getting your life to be better, not, not because of what I say, not because of what I'm doing, but because of what you're doing, because of what you say. It's you writing your goals down, not me telling you what you need to do. It's you writing down where you want to be, and then you're sharing it. And yeah, it can be scary, but man, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're scared to share your dreams, how the hell are you going to go after them? What's going to happen to you the first time somebody tells you no? I'm done. If you can't even write them down and put them out there, there's no way that you can go and accomplish it. You're just not going to be able to. You don't even have enough confidence. Look, if I told you, all right, I want you to, if you want to get your dreams, if you really want your dreams, there's going to be one secret. This is it. One secret the biggest dream you've ever had, right? It, less like flying like Superman, okay? I mean, let's, let's talk about realistic. If I told you all you have to do is write down on a piece of paper, whatever sex you are, right? I'm a man, okay? I, and I'll use me for an example. All I'd have to do is write down, my name is Pete Asmus. I'm a male. I am about 40 years old. And um, I have a family. I have three girls and a boy. And I am interested in having one more son. <laughs> and um, I love kids. Now, 
If I told you that that's all you had to do for you to attain success, like let's say you were uh, Mike Jensen, okay? I'll go ahead and pick on you, Mike. And all you had to do, Mike, was say, I'm Mike Jensen and I'm a male and I have a wife and I live in Boston and I'm a realtor at this point and I have a rental house and you know a few more facts. That wouldn't be hard. Now you've actually done this, so I'm not picking on you for real. But the fact is it took you a while to do it. And had people, most people, you, we don't have a problem sharing what people can see, right? What's obvious. Look, obviously I'm a male. Obvious, well, it's not obvious that my name is Pete, but if I run around saying my name's Pete Asmus, then obviously my name's Pete Asmus, right? And obviously I have kids because I put them up on, on YouTube every single day with my daily motivational videos. So those things are obvious about me. But what you may not know are my goals. And that's what I put in the descriptions of my of my videos. I I mean they're there, they're on Facebook, they're they're all over, but the point of the fact is I put my goals everywhere. I want people to know. I want people to know that my daughters are starting a, a charity called Size Doesn't Matter to help out other children with cancer and alopecia. I want people to know that. They should know that. Because there's probably somebody somewhere with a child that has something wrong and that child wants to do more and they're going, you know what? You're not going to make a difference. So it doesn't really matter. Don't worry about it. And I want them to know, you know what? That's wrong. Don't think like that. When you think that you can't do anything, I hate this. You know, what, what you think you can, you can. And what you think you can't, you can. Yeah, that's true. But man, it's true. It's true. When you guys focus on something, when you look at something, when you're thinking about something and you're thinking, I just don't, I, mm, there's just no way I can do that. Then guess what? There is no way that you can do that. Because before you even get up to the pitching, uh, to the mound, right? To hit the bat, to hit the ball. Before you even get up there, every single step you're going, I'm never going to hit this ball. I can't hit overhand. I can't hit fast pitch. I don't, I, my hand-eye coordination isn't that good. I mean, man, so by the time you get up there to hit it, right? Re, re, man, if it was on a tee, you'd miss the ball. You'd miss it. Just, and it's right there, right there in front of you. And you'd miss it. Why? Two reasons. One, you have no idea what you want. Unless you're writing your goals down every day, you really don't know what you want. You, you know what you think you want, but to actually physically write your goals every day, it takes time. And, and that time is what gives you the opportunity to consistently listen and think about what you really want. Do you see what I'm saying? It gives you, it gives you the ability to visualize your life. And I know some of you may think visualization doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It, it absolutely is... is it, it, no, Ivan hates it regardless, but it, it, it's regardless of what you do, the results will be the same. But the reality is it, it isn't. When you visualize where you're going to be, when you start visualizing and you think about conversations, you think about what you can do, you, you envision what they're going to say and how you could overcome this and how you could overcome that. And then you start thinking, you know what, what questions would they ask? And how would I overcome those questions so that I can actually answer those questions within the first context of our, our speaking together or, or the email or whatever it is. Think about if you wanted to go and talk to somebody and you had thought about the conversation long enough that you figured out what they would probably ask. So you were able to make a very short and to the point explanation of what you wanted to talk about actually addressing each of their real questions. What would they do? How would they react? See, we're so used to having a conversation with somebody, getting into a conversation and, and, and actually replying or responding or reacting 
to the information that's presented to us. Instead of actually thinking about what could happen, right? And then what you do instead is you you think about all the issues and you actually overcome them in advance. So when they actually address that, you're not backpedaling and not even backpedaling in a bad way, but backpedaling thinking, okay, I didn't think about that. Hold on, let me let me figure out how, how I'd address that. Instead of that kind of mentality, which do you think that that's from a, a place of strength or, or weakness? It's from weakness, right? So instead of that, how would it be to, if somebody posed that question and you instead came back with, well, I actually thought about that. And in, and if that happens, the way that we would combat that is we would go around this way because this would incorporate that and da, 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 da. And now they're like, man, that's, I, that's, that's a great solution. They really have thought of everything. It's about thinking in a solution-based thinking way. So many people think about problem solving, right? They think about problems. That's the problem. I want to change that to solution-based thinking. Not problem solving, solution-based thinking. All we do is focus on solutions. We don't look at the problem. The problem the problem is going to present itself. That's not what I'm focused on. What I want to focus on is what what are the solutions to the problem? How do you get rid of it in the fastest, most efficient possible way, right? Whatever that issue or problem or challenge or whatever we want to call that may be, you know, there are, there are different challenges that we all face. Some of them are physical. Some of them are mental. Some of them are, are abstract, right? It's just like we all have challenges within ourselves, disabilities within ourselves. Some of them are physical. Some of them are mental. Some of them are, 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 are able to be seen. Some of them are invisible. And so the thing is, how do we relate to each other? What are we going to do? And, and what are we doing consistently to build our brand? Because if you think that you're not a brand, you're crazy. We're all a brand. Even if you work at a different, or if you, at a different, even if you work for somebody else, right? Let's say that you're an insurance broker or, or you're, a, 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 I don't know, you're on the phone, telesales or something, right? I get that, but you still are your brand. If you become amazing at that, everybody knows what? Your name. Why? Why do they know your name? They know your name because you've built a reputation. A reputation is something that is done with consistency. You don't build a reputation by doing something once. Unless you want the one hit wonder type of reputation, and I guess you could have that reputation. But a reputation that people truly want, that they're proud of, comes from consistency. It comes from doing the same thing over and over and over again, repeatedly. And when you start to form things like habits, you're going to see how amazing your life really can be. Because this life, this one that we all have right now, it's all pliable. You can paint this whatever color you want. You can paint it whenever you want. Or you can le keep letting other people paint your picture. It's really up to you. The, the question becomes, when are you going to be fed up? When are you going to be done? When are you going to be through living other people's dreams, living other people's lives, and building other people's you know, goals? When is it going to be your turn, your turn to step up and say, hey, you know what? I'm ready. I'm ready to believe in me. I told you before, consistency, the rah-rah thing, it, you know, one or two days of being excited, that's not going to get you anywhere. What's going to get you somewhere is you being excited consistently over and over and over every single day when you get up. It's you, it's you consistently having the same attitude, the attitude of greatness, the attitude of power, the attitude of, of thankfulness. It's about having that consistently that will drive you way up here and you will be so high above everybody else because you're happy and everybody else is going to look up and want to come up with you. They're going to want to reach up to you. That's what the goal program is all about. The goal program is all about creating leaders. 
It's about you creating your own destiny. Consistency falls right into this because when you write your goals consistently, they become real. I'm on Bloomberg five days a week live. I wrote that in June last year before I was on the radio at all. I hadn't even got on the radio, but I knew that's what I really wanted. I wrote it down and I wrote it down and I wrote it down and I wrote it down. December 1st, I was on Bloomberg five days a week live. You can have whatever you want. The difference is, the challenge is, most of you write your goals down, you get excited about this for a week. And then this loses its shininess. This looks like it's going to be work now, not fun. And this goes like that. And then all of a sudden, whoa, look at this. What about this? This looks like it could be a lot more fun. Look at this. It has a zipper, right? And then after a week, you're like, but all right, well, that's not fun anymore. And so you start looking for other things. And that's how you live your life, except maybe it's not a week. Maybe it's a month. Maybe it's three months. Maybe it's four months. But you keep changing. You don't stick with anything for long enough for any kind of consistency to actually happen so that you can see the results that you're getting. That's why you need a challenge. That's why you need somebody else. That's why you need to go into a system that you can get motivated every single day. Because again, it's about staying up here consistently, not going up here and then falling back down and going up here and falling back down and going up here and falling back down. It's why we do the daily motivational videos. Because we wanted to reach people on a daily basis. I want to change your life. I want to change your life. I want to make it better. I want to take you to the next level of you. I've been saying this for over a year. This is consistency. I've never asked any of you to pay for Journey to Success. I've never, I've never asked any of you. I mean, I created these wristbands because I wanted to change your lives. And now I've created the 21 day challenge because I want to change your life. I want to make it better. I realized that what I did in the beginning was wrong. I told you guys to go make something happen. And when I told you to go make something happen, what I did was this. You guys started to make something happen, all right? You put your right foot in, you put your right foot. And then you, right yep. In, and then you, you shake it, you it all about. You do the you, hokey, that's all you were doing. It was forward, backward. You're going side to side. You're moving in all different directions. This is exactly what it's like when I say you guys are doing this, the, the shiny object. You're like, oh, 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 man. And you're just, you're just running all around in circles. You've got no focus. And so, okay, all right, thank you. We're not going to have the left arm and all the rest of the body parts. And now we're all jumping in and jumping out and doing the hokey pokey. That's why I created the challenge. Because everybody started doing action, but they weren't getting results from the actions because the actions weren't consistently focused in one direction. So I came up now with the challenge. With, with, uh, here we go. <clears throat> with the challenge. Because the challenge is all about focusing your energy now, right? Now that you're going to go make something happen, okay? So we're going to go, here we go. We're going to go make something happen, right? <clears throat> and in order to go make something happen, we have to focus in on something to aim at. We've got to be going in a direction and consistently in the same direction. It, it does us no good to go four steps forward, then three steps to the right, then one step to the left, then three steps back, then two steps to the right. You know what I mean? We're right back in the same damn place. This is not where we want to be. We've already said that. We don't want to be here. We do not want to be here. We want our life to be different. But all you're doing is kicking sand in about 50 different directions instead of actually moving in one. The 21 day challenge is about getting you to move in the same direction forward. It's about getting you to focus every day on that goal that you really want. Believe me, the goals are going to start changing. But what happens is 
they start changing. The words start changing, but then they start shifting and, and things lock into place. And you'll you'll have, okay, I wanna I wanna affect ten thousand people in the year or you know, a thousand people in 2014. I wanna impact a thousand people in 2014. I wanna impact five thousand people in 2014. I wanna impact ten thousand people in 2014. I want to impact 10,000 people in 2014. I want to impact 10,000 people in 2014. That doesn't change anymore. That's what I want to do. Your goals will change, but then they will start to lock in. And now every day when I write that down, if I have somebody reach out to me, I've got to take that call. I've got to, I've got to answer that email. I've got to reach out and answer whatever, whatever I can do to help because... I want to impact 10,000 people in 2014. It's on my mind constantly. I'm constantly thinking about, I want to impact people. And if that's happening, what am I doing right now to do that? What am I setting myself up for? What am I, what am I reaching out for? It causes you to push harder, to, to, to do better. And then start reaching out and helping others. Because man, when you start impacting those around you in a positive light, it's crazy. It's crazy what's possible. And I'm seeing it. So how does the challenge work? Um, it's all right here. You want to write down your goals every morning in a notebook. And then you take a picture. Um, you put them up. You hashtag me. And then you hashtag, oh, man. Okay. Hold on. I got to fix that right now. Let's see. No. What are you doing? Here we go, because that is the wrong hashtag. 21 day challenge, hashtag 21 day challenge, because I want to make it easy and there's no the here, so we're not going to have any the there. So that is the hashtag. That's the main, main hashtag that you're going to use um, on the challenge. And it's all about community. Um, let's see here. Community, business, and personal, right? Um, I wanted it to be where we started focusing your life a little differently. So many times we put up one main goal, right? And we're like, oh, I want to go after that goal. And yeah, I get it. But at the same time, there's different parts of our life. There's different aspects. And if we don't focus on them, they're never going to get any energy. They're never going to get any light. They're never going to get any watering. So we broke it up. I want to know how you're going to give back. I want to work with people that want to give back, period. I want to work with people that want to give back. If you don't want to give back, I have no desire to really help you. Because why? Why am I going to help you if you're not going to go out and help anybody else? I'm not asking you for anything, but you're telling me that you're too good to help other people? See, I'm not okay with that. So I want to know how are you going to give back to other communities, to your community, to other people? What do you want to do? Five goals. They could be easy, but five goals. Five business goals. You've got to want something in business, a dollar amount, um, a position, a company, something, right? And then five personal, meaning what do you want for you, right? Where you wouldn't necessarily say, let's say you've always wanted like a baby grand piano. Now that wouldn't really go into community or business. So that'd be something that would be a personal goal that I've always wanted one of these or a horse or, or whatever it may be, right? And so you're going to make five of those. And you're going to write them down as if they're past tense, as if they've already happened. I see a lot of people writing a task list like, I'm going to get food today. <clears throat> awesome. That's not what we meant. We didn't mean, you know, what's your grocery item list? It, it's something more to the effect of, like I said, I own, a, I, I own a baby grand piano that I play every day. Now, if you don't know how to play the piano, and if you don't own a grand, baby grand piano, that is a perfect goal in that sense. Meaning that is something that you want to do, but you're writing it as if you've already done it. It already happened. And you now play the piano every day on this grand piano, baby grand that's in your house. And so that's something, that's the way I would write it. I write or I play, I play different song or I play my baby grand piano every day. That's, that's in my house or uh, something to that effect. I mean, I don't know. I've, I've never wanted that. So I'm, I'm, I'm making things up as we go along, but something like that. It's something that already happened. It's already past tense and not in a weird past tense. It's like present past tense, right? Meaning you are doing it. You've already done it, but you're still doing it. Present tense affirmative. You've already done it and you're still doing it. 
All right. So, you know, I make a million dollars every year. Right. That That's I've already done it and I do it. OK. Or I make 10 million dollars, whatever it is, whatever your goals are that that you want to that you want to have. Um, I own three apartment buildings. I own three Alps. I own blank that generates blank. I own three apartment buildings that generate $350,000 a month. I, I mean, whatever it is that, that, that you want it to be, right? There is no, like, like Ivan says, there's no ridiculous goal, only a ridiculous effort. Ridiculous timelines. You got you to gotta bring up your effort. You got to expect more from yourself. You got to take it up a notch. It's about moving up to that next level. And that's what the challenge is all about. It's all about focusing your efforts. It's about putting you in the right direction. If you know what you really want, it makes it real easy to go out there and attain it. Well, yeah, it does. It makes it, it does make it real easy. It doesn't mean it's going to be simple. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be hard, but you know what you want. If you don't know what you want, you're just like, oh, I just want to make a, I just want to make a bunch of money. Okay. How? I don't know. Well, how the hell are you going to go do that? Cause I don't know any positions that hire for, I don't know. I'm, I don't. I mean, even if it was, I want to be a model, you've got to work out, you've got to eat ridiculous. I mean, there's, there's, everybody suffers. Everybody gives up something. So what is it that you want to give up for what you really want? And what is it that you really want? You got to know which, uh, which way you're aimed, right? So that is our challenge. All right. You can go to, uh, when you go to right here, when you go to c2crea.com, uh, 21 day challenge, it looks like this. Um, on here, we show you all the different things or that go through the steps, the five steps to the 21 day challenge. And then all you got to do is click right here on the join the challenge button, put in your information and you're good to go. It is that easy. Um, and then every day you get a video or, uh, an email. Um, you get an email that explains, uh, something about like you get a quote and then an email that goes with it. Right. So, we wanted to inspire people every day. So something kind of like that one right there where you don't have to start, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. We wanted to, to, to build an inspiring um, campaign that for, for 21 days, you guys got something that helped motivate you to write your goals and, and kept you accountable and kept you moving forward. Um, and it was pretty cool because uh, the whole Thinking to Succeed group got together and wrote it. So it's, it's pretty neat. It's not me. It's... It's everybody that actually did this. They all wrote um, an email for you guys. And I think that's cool, man. Because that that's, again, that's, that's how I wanted to build it. I wanted to build it through everybody, where everybody was helping everybody. That's the idea. The idea is us helping each other. The idea is a network that, that, that supports each other, that lifts each other up. That we have a group now for uh, Pete Asmus's 21 Day Challenge. You can go join the group and you can put your goals up in that group. Um, and everybody in the group like likes it, supports it, helps you, um, gives you ideas. I wanted to build a positive place to, to create. And that's what we, we wanted to do for you. So I think it's awesome, obviously. Um, but... Uh, it just, it surpassed already what I thought it would be. I mean, it's just, it's so much more. So um, Pete Asmus' 21 day challenge. Are you ready to take your life to the next level? All you got to do is go to the challenge, uh, c2crea.com forward slash 21 day challenge and, um, and join. It's that easy. Uh, goals are the blocks that support your success. And that's what that challenge is all about. It's all about helping you figure out what your goals are so that you can write them down and then you can start being accountable. And that's the coolest part. The, the part that's scary for most people, which is, I got to put it out there. Yeah. Why is that scary to you? Why would that be scary, by the way? Why do you guys think that that would be scary to put your goals out there? Um, and the questions you guys can go ahead and answer. I don't know if you guys have been talking at all. All right. Um, but why do you guys think that it would be scary to put your goals out on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, um, on all those different mediums, on Instagram. Do you think that people feel it's none of their business? Um, and, you know, hey, look, you know, where I want to go, it's none of everybody else's business. Do you think that's the real reason? Or do you think it's, I'm going to say it's none of their business because I feel like people might make fun of my goals. 
They might think that my goals aren't good enough, aren't, aren't right enough. Um, I know that most of the people that have gotten into this challenge in the beginning, that's what they, they thought. And that's what they felt. And I really kind of loved it once they told me that because it was, I was able to almost like freak out and yell and say, are you kidding me? You know, like what, like, what do you mean? And that's where I came up with, look, if you don't have enough gumption, if you don't have enough guts, if you don't have enough self-belief to put your goals out there, how in the hell are you going to go and accomplish them? That's the first step. That's the first step of getting off of the, the bench, right? That's the first step is putting your goals out there, putting where you want to be out there. Because when you do, you're standing up for something. Now, people know what you are. They know who you are. So just make sure they're really your goals, not what you think everybody else wants them to be. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you'll get so much farther in life if you just be you. You don't have to be anybody else. You don't have to pretend to be them or them or them or them or them. All you got to do is be you. Who you are is amazing. It is. And I'm going to tell you right now, I find it. Okay, for instance, I keep thinking everybody's like me. And I think that everybody is a visionary. I think everybody um, comes up with ideas, but doesn't have the consistency to actually pull them off. Um, or not pull them off, but but uh, follow through. Like, like it, very few things can I actually do over and over and over again um, when it comes to big project, right? I don't, I, there's no way for me to actually think of it and do it and do all the different parts. But there are other people who go, look, I don't want to come up with the idea. I just want to do it. Just tell me what to do and I can do it. And it's like, well, no, just come up. Like, what do you want to do? Where, think of an idea. I don't know. I mm -mm, don't want to think of it. I just, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. And that to me is crazy. Like, I'm like, oh my God, don't tell me what to do. Just let me come up with some kind of cool idea. And that's where I am in my wheelhouse, right? But there are other people that, that don't think like that. And so you have like these different types of people. Well, what type of person are you? Because once you understand what you really want to do, then you just have to find your counterpart. The reality is I think there's kind of like three different types, right? You'd have um, uh, the visionary, the, the, um, the what did they call it? The engineer or the, um, the manager. And then, ah, oh man, Aaliyah was telling me this yesterday and I can't remember what the third thing she said was. And it was out of a book that she was reading and she said, you know, we're a lot alike in that way. Um, and we need those other two kinds of people around us because for us, it's very difficult and it takes a lot of energy. So it'll take me five times as long to do their job as mine. Because when I do that aspect of the job, it's not where I'm, I'm not in my wheelhouse. It's not fun for me. So it's like really, really hard and work. Whereas when I have to think of ideas and, and, and creative ideas and solutions to problems, like I love that. I can do that all day long and it doesn't take any of my energy. In fact, it gives me energy when I do that. Um, and so it's about getting the right people around you. And if you know where you want to go and you know what type of person that you are, then it's easy to go, okay, well, now I need to find two other people or one other person, whatever. Usually two people can pretty much mask three. Um, and you can, you can work through it. For me, I know that the more people I have around me, the better. And, and going back to, let's talk about the power of 10. So, when we talk about the power of 10, we talk about the fact that, you know, you are the, the culmination of the 10 people around you, right? My idea is if you've got 10 people that are, um, that are amazing, right? How amazing is your life going to be? If you have 10 people that, that think positive nonstop, how amazing is your life going to be? Well, what about if you have 10 people that, that think the world is falling? apart? What if you have 10 people around you that think that there's no way to get ahead in life? What if you have 10 people around you that think that, um, you know, we are where we are and it is what it is and there's no way to do any better because we're not those type of people. 
how hard would it be to become an entrepreneur when you had nine other people around you that felt like there was no way you could possibly do anything to change the world. There was no way that you could possibly do anything on your own. You can't run a business. You can't do this. You can't do that. How hard would it be for you to move forward? I'm assuming extremely difficult. And that's where taking, excuse me, taking an inventory of who you have around you is going to be necessary. Because I'll tell you right now, I would rather have nine people around me that are actually in the challenge, doing the challenge, focused on their goals and going after what they dream of. Because me watching them do that, right? That's going to force me to do it. And I know that if I write my goals down, I'm going to do better. In fact, Michael Wetterman um, created this post that was amazing about uh, the study about, uh, what, what was it? Harvard study from 1979, um, where they, they did the study of the people that write their goals, right? The graduating class. And they asked of the graduating class, you know, how many of you guys have written down your goals? And 3% had clearly defined and written goals. 18%, I think, had um, goals that they knew where they wanted to go. And then the other 79% were like, I don't know, whatever. Like, just, it's cool, man. I just want to get out of here. So, and I think they did it in 10 years. They they checked it out again and they, they looked. And the 18% that had goals, that knew where they wanted to go, hadn't written them, but had goals, were making twice as much as the other 79%. But the 3% that had actually clearly defined them and written them down were making 10 times as much. Now, you're right. I guess that doesn't have to really prove anything if you don't want it to. But let's just pretend for a second that that was legitimate. Let's pretend for a second that that was absolutely real. If you did it, it would make your life amazing. Well, if for a second, let's pretend it wasn't real. If you did it, it wouldn't hurt your life in any way, shape, or form, right? But let's look at the other side of that coin. If it wasn't real and you didn't do it, great job. You saved 10 minutes a day. Wonderful. Think of all the things you can do with that 10 minutes. And if it did work and you didn't write your goals down, Great job. You make nine times less than your peer. So my question, I guess, is five to 10 minutes a morning worth nine times what you make right now? That's the best question I can ask because that's what you're asking yourself. That's what you need to be asking is is my pride, is my this, is my that, whatever it is, is my fear, is my scared, is my this, is that all worth me making nine times less than I'm worth? Because that's what's happening right now if you're not in the challenge. If you're not writing, well, let me rephrase that. Not if you're not in the challenge. If you're not writing your goals down, you don't have to join the challenge. You don't have to do any of that. If you have enough, if you have enough self-motivation that you can write your goals down every day and, and you think that that's a better route, then don't post them online. Don't get help from people. Don't get the support from other people that want to help you get where you want to go. Because if I don't know what your goals are, there's absolutely no way for me to introduce you to the right people. I'm a great hub. I've got a lot of contacts. I know a lot of people and a lot of people that that like me, that that actually listen to what I say. and if I know somebody that wants to do something, it allows me to help them when I can. If I know somebody that wants to go somewhere, that wants to try something new, then I can help them. But I can only do that if I know where they want to go, if I know what their goals are. If I see somebody that lives in Kansas City that wants to help out with a nonprofit, I can turn them on to River, uh, River Refuge because I know them and because I know that that's their goal. But if I didn't, 
There's nothing I can do. That's why it's so important that you guys share your goals. That's why it's so important that you take that 10 minutes to earn 10 times what you make now. I would think that that's worth it, right? I mean, if you guys have anything else, if you guys think I'm wrong, that's okay. I'll listen. I'd love to hear it. Excuse me. But chances are you don't. Because the reality is writing your goals does work. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. And the better you get at it, the more defined your goals become. And the more defined the goals become, the more real they become. It's just about you writing them down consistently every day. Consistently. Which, let's talk about that. So, steps to creating success, we talked about already. The reason is you, right? The whole reason you're doing all of this, guys, is for you. It's not for me. It's not for anybody else. It's got to be for you. Number one, passion. You've got to have a passion for whatever it is that you're doing. It's got, you've got, the passion is what's going to give you the gas to drive through all of the challenges that you're going to face. You've got to have belief. You have to believe that you can do whatever it is that you want to do. Again, that's where the challenge comes in because it, it helps support you. You have to have belief. And the more people that believe you can do it, the more confident you become. That's why the net of, of support. That's why I wanted to create this group of positive reinforcement. Because man, there's so many people around you punching you, knocking you down. How many people reach out and, and lift you up every single day? How many people go out of their way to comment and say, great job? Because I'm, I'm, I'm guessing there aren't that many. But if you come around us, I promise that'll change. We're all about inspiring you to, to become a better you. Um, values. Look, and that's the other thing, right? Values. You, you've got to have those values line up. If your values don't line up with me, we're not going to click. And if we're not going to click, I'm not going to put my effort into it when it's not going to work anyways. If you want to go in that direction, and I don't think that's a good direction, I'm not going to go in that direction. I want to find everybody that wants to go in the same direction I do. Now, it's not a weird direction for me, right? Because I think that we should help. I think we should give back. I think there should be a lot of mentorships and, and, and stuff that doesn't cost things so that we can build a person better and we can help create wealth within them and, and with them. And then they can bring that back and we can invest it and we can grow it and we can do all that stuff. But let's create a better person first. I don't know why everybody has always got to be about me, me, me. It's, it's, it should be about helping, helping, helping. And then they want to come and be with us because they see the help that they're getting. Not because in order to get help, you have to be charged. Anyways, um, and that's the last of the internals, right? Those are all the things that we have a decision about. I can choose what my values are and I can make sure that they line up with yours. I can choose what I believe in and I can choose what I'm passionate about, right? Then once that happens, we step out of the internal space, all right? We've got to step up our effort because now we're stepping into the external. The external is something like creating the right strategies, right? Like, like Tony Robbins says, you can't run east to find a sunset. It's not going to happen. So once we have the right strategies and, and we know where we want to go, we've got to start implementing these things with consistency. If you know, if you've got that right strategy and you've created passion and belief, writing your goals down should be easy. You've created your goals already. Consistency is going to help you attain them. And writing them down every day, writing down what you want to do, is going to get you driven towards that goal. I've seen it over and over and over and over and over again, man. I can't, I, I cannot express the level of of, I don't know, I was going to say seriousness, but I think that sounds weird. So I'll just say the level of passion that I have for what I'm saying. Um, it's really about consistency, and I have no idea why there's a big chapter four right there. <clears throat> I love this quote, so I wanted to put this up here. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. Aristotle. 
Success is in the consistency of what you do over and over and over and over and over. Do you understand what I'm saying? To be successful at anything, guys, it's repetition. It's practice. Every day. Every day. Every day. Not not just sometimes, every day. I do motivational videos every single day with my girls. Every day. When I'm home, if they're not sick, I mean, there's a very few days that I have not done it. Um, and it's it's typically been, obviously, if I'm not home or if uh, one of the girls have been sick and, and then usually I still do it with the other one. So it's all about consistency. They know every morning they do a video. Every single morning they do one. And they're getting better and I'm getting better and the videos are getting better and the editing is getting better and the all of it is getting better. Why? Because I do them every single day. They weren't great overnight. They certainly weren't even great after a couple weeks or months. I've been doing it for over a year to get them to the level that they are now. So don't think that you're going to be great at anything when you start. But to be great at anything, you have to start. You have to. You have to get past the fear. You have to get past the, the being scared. You have to get past the thoughts that you that you can't do it, right? So, I love this one too. Um, there are no shortcuts. You get what you get out what you put in. And think about that, guys. A lot of times, you know, we think that, oh, well, when they're talking about you get out what you put in, or, or talking about working out. Well, if I work out harder, I'm going to get a harder, you know, return. Yeah, that's true. At the same time, it's very true about eating and what you listen to, but we don't ever think about that. We don't think about the fact that what we eat, when you eat bad food, when you eat fatty foods, when you eat food that isn't good for you, right? High in cholesterol, all these other things. And, and, you know, even like pizza, right? When you eat that stuff consistently, it's hard for your body to break down. It takes more energy for your body to break it down. The energy that it's consuming and breaking down the food, you're not getting out here. And that's why a lot of times you eat this big meal and you're like, oh my God, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. Well, you're tired because your body is in overdrive trying to break down that crap you just put in your body. When you start eating clean, there's a good and a bad to it. When you start eating clean, you have way more energy. You feel lighter. You feel better. better. You're all so hungry, it seems like, every 30 minutes. And it seems like the food is just not filling. But that's because your body is not sitting there breaking it down for hours on end. And it's utilizing that energy somewhere else. The same thing with what you're listening to. You're going, well, no, you know, what's the big deal? I listen to music every once in a while. You know, it's probably not every once in a while. You probably listen to music all the time. And the thing is, there's so many different things you could be listening to and learning instead of listening to crap. At the same time, we're also referring to those nine people around you. You know, just because somebody's your friend does not mean that they can't poison you. Even if it's unintentional, it really doesn't matter because they have a lack of belief in their abilities. They lack the belief in your abilities because they have a lack of trust in the government or whatever it is. They feel like whatever you want to do, there's no way to do it. And so they're constantly talking down to you. They're constantly making fun of you. They're constantly, whatever it is, whatever it is, they're constantly or consistently holding you back. And sometimes that's the hardest thing that you have to do is cut, cut that line. But I'll tell you, I had to cut that line. I had to cut that line with a couple people and it kind of hurt and it kind of sucked, but it wasn't worth me explaining every single time I saw them how it was different. It wasn't worth me explaining every single time how I saw them that I had to work harder than everybody else, even though I, I own my own business now. <laughs> even though I worked for myself, I now had to work all the time instead of just when I was scheduled. So I didn't have a schedule anymore. And it wasn't until later that I was able to go back and, and 
they saw the light and now you know that it's that's a different relationship but the fact is you're all going to grow you're going to grow past your current friends it is what it is you're either going to grow past them and live up to greatness or you're going to stay with them in mediocrity and i guess that's up to you if it's really that important that you hang out with them then you can hang out in mediocrity you can hang out with not having anything. But for me, it just wasn't worth it. I wanted a better life for my family. I wanted to make sure that my family and my family's families would be set for life. I wanted to make sure that when my daughters are born, that, well, I'm sorry, when my daughters get married, that they're, or when they turn 18, golly, when they turn 18, that they can do whatever they want. That financially, they're set. And not just because I'm giving them money, but because they know how to earn the money. Not because I'm giving it to them, because they've already done flips, because they already have hold properties, because they've already generate, they're already generating $15,000 a month in passive income. Not because I set it up for them, but because over the last 10 years, since they've been eight years old, they've been doing real estate under their company name. <clears throat> That's how smart my kids are going to be. That's the kind of things that are in my goals. And that's the type of thing I think about every single day. Every single day when I get up and do the video. I don't really want to do the video. Do you want your kids to, to, to see differently? Yes, I do. Then get your ass up, man. It's time to do the video. Your kids have got to hear something different. They've got to see the positivity. They've got to believe in themselves. They've got to know that they're different. They've got to inspire others because when they inspire others, then they're going to see the possibilities and that any kind of anything that neither one of them can be held back. And so I have to do that every single day because I want to consistently show my girls that they're different. Now, your whatever isn't the same as mine. But the question is, what is your whatever? Because there are no shortcuts. There's none. The shortcut, that's doing it right the first time. That's the shortcut. You want the shortcut, there it is. Do it right the first time. Then you don't have to do it the second time. That is the shortcut. But all this other crap that you do, it's not a shortcut. It's a long cut. Because then you still have to come back and do it the right way, the, the, the right way the first time. But now you've added all this other time because you wanted to do it your way. Because you thought you knew better instead of just doing it the right way. Sometimes the right way seems longer, but it isn't. It never is. So when you think about what you're doing, when you think about what you want to do, realize that, that, this, that this is your life. This whole thing is your life. The way you look at it through your eyes is different than anybody else. And that the talents and the, and the resources that you have are special to you. Nobody else has the talents and resources that you have. Now, you want to become more valuable? Grow both of those. Grow your talents and grow your resources. How can you grow your resources? You can find money for real estate deals if, if you're in real estate. If not, you, you can find people around you. You can build your skill sets. You can grow your network. Find the people around you that you do need. It's about growing. And the bigger your network, the bigger your net worth. I promise you that. I have this new mastermind group that I'm putting together and it still just blows me away of everybody that's going to be in this group. I mean, from lawyers to rehabbers to lenders to, to everything. And it's like, mm, well, there's just eight of us. And I'm putting us all in a, in a room for five hours because we are going to hammer something out. We are going to create some kind of opportunity out here. And I don't know what it is, but we're going to do something. And I've got enough of the right type of people in that room that something amazing is going to come out of that. But I, there's no way I would have had the opportunity or been in a position to, to actually call this shot if I wasn't consistently doing what I say that I'll do, if I wasn't consistently helping everybody around me, nobody would be listening to me right now. 
Nobody. So believe me, it's going to take a lot of giving to get. I've been giving for a year and a half, almost two years now, which just trips me out. But it's the truth. And right now, things are really starting to happen. But it's taken that long of seeing the light, of seeing what is possible. And now I'm looking at putting together a production company that we're going to do videos and, and, and we're, going to, we're going to put on expos, but I'm going to be able to produce the expo, meaning I can design it. I'm going to be able to do the lights, the cameras, the ad, like how I want them to come in, where the screens are, how the setup is, the colors, everything. Like I get to, to, to be a creative designer of the expos. I guess that's really what it is. Which, man, are you kidding me? Like that is my wheelhouse. That's what I want to do. I want to do that. Not because I have to, because I want to. Like I want to do that. I'm still doing real estate over here to pay bills and stuff, but man, this could be huge. But it's going to be huge because it's my passion. Not because I'm required to do it. Not because I had to figure out a way to make money, but because an opportunity came up and I'm very good in that arena and I'm known for being good. Why am I known for being good? Because I've been good consistently. Over the last 10 years, people know that I know what it comes, I know what I'm doing when it comes to AV is setting up a sound equipment. When it comes to, to creating videos and making videos, because I love doing it and they see me doing it all the time. Not because I'm being paid for it, but now, now I am going to be being paid for it. And that's what I mean by when you do something that you love, get really good at it because eventually you can monetize it. And now because of what I've done and the, and the expertise and the things that I've shown that I'm good at, I'm getting called in to, to become part and to head and, and, and become a production company, which I'm probably going to call Next Level Media, bringing, the, bringing your experience to the next level because that's what it's going to be. I mean, man, believe me, when I do the expo in Chicago, you guys want to come and see that, the REI Expo. You will want to be there. Um, all right. So I don't know how that got way off in the side, but listening um, and eating, obviously protecting your mind. Um, okay. And then your attitude determines altitude, which really bums me out because I had a cool um, picture to go with this. And the, the reality is, look, we talked about it. Rah, 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 right? You got to get happy. You got to be excited. You got to be up at that top level of you. But it's not just about being up there for a minute. It's not about being up there for a second, for a day, for a week. It's about being up there for your life. It's about living your life out loud. Living it to the full, fullest degree that you can possibly live your life. It's about taking opportunities. It's about seizing chances. It's about, it's about realizing that right now, your life is a blank canvas in front of you. And you can paint it whatever color you want if you just get up and start painting. Start telling the light, your, your universe. Start telling your life what you want. Because right now, it doesn't know. And neither does anybody else around you. And it is, it is impossible for us to help you if we don't know what you want. If we don't know where you want to go. And if we don't know what you're willing to do to make that happen. Because it's real easy to say, I want to make a million dollars. The next question that everybody will be asked is, how? And it's real easy to go, well, I don't know, a lottery ticket or something. That's not duplicatable. You want to find a way that's duplicatable. And if you don't know how, then get around smart people. Get around more than you. That's why I'm bringing all these great people around me. Not because I have all the answers. I don't. I want to bring all them because I'm figuring maybe I have a little piece and they have a little piece and they have a little piece and she has some and she has some and they have some. And now all of a sudden it's like, woo, now we got a pizza. Now we've got the whole thing. Why? Because I've got all these amazing people that just threw into an idea and I've got the ability to kickstart something and make it happen. That's my, my gift. That's my asset. I have the ability to bring people together and make it happen. So what is it that you have the ability to do? 
What is it that you want to do? Think about, think about all the things that you could do, all the things that, that you have going on in your life that, that you want to take action on. What are some of the things that, that you really want to do? Like if you had to make up a bucket list, what would your bucket list look like? And then I love this part. I love when people think, well, I'm only 30. I don't need a bucket list. Or I'm only 40. I don't need a bucket list. Or I'm only 20. I don't need a bucket list. We all need a bucket list. We all need a bucket list right now. That's what goals are. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you have no idea when your time is going to be over. None. Shannon's cousin had a, had a little baby that had um, cancer. And I mean, it, it, it's sad. And she's got to go to a funeral now on, on Tuesday for a baby that was like uh, the, the age of a little bit older than um, Graceland. I mean, just, you know, under two years old. And if something like that happened in your life, what would happen to you? What would happen? If something, not even if you were taken out, what about if somebody else around you was? And all of a sudden you went to that, like, not a good place, right? I've been there. I made sure that if that happened to me again, and I was down for the count for a few months because I just became completely dumb, that, that I had a, I had, I had something happening. And I do now. And if you don't, Let's make that change. It's going to start with you writing down your goals. It's going to start with you getting after it. It's going to start with you realizing there is a time limit. Something is going to happen in your life. Something. Something is going to happen that's bad at some point. That's going to really take you off your game. It happens to everybody. And so my question is, if that happens and when that happens, what are you going to do? If you don't have a contingency plan for... I mean, man, you don't want to just go, well, I don't know, I'll figure it out then because that's not good. You've got to be set up. You've got to be prepared. You've got to be as far along as you can so when something happens and you get tripped, it's okay, man. You can get back up and start running again. But that's only if you have a plan. And right now, you don't have a plan. So write your goals down and stop jumping on a boat, hammering the gas and going down to the galley and eating. It's time to move on. All right. Now, once we realize these, th these different things that we can change, we've got we've to start blowing out our comfort zone. We've got to start realizing that, hey, the comfort zone is meant to be broken on a consistent basis, right? Our comfort zone, we blow it, we blow it apart. Well, all we do is create a different comfort zone. So we've got to blow it apart again and blow it apart again and blow it apart again. Blowing... Uh, Breaking out of your comfort zone is something that is a daily, yearly, for the rest of your life thing. You got to realize that you don't have a comfort zone anymore. There is no comfort zone. It does, <laughs> there, there is no comfort zone. There is no comfort zone. Take it out. When you're uncomfortable, man, you should be on fire. This is awesome that I'm this uncomfortable. Oh my God, why? It means that I'm realizing I don't have a comfort zone. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make it happen. That's what you want to do. All right, so question and answer time. Let's see here, guys. If anybody out there has any questions at all, go ahead and raise your hand and I will unmute you. It is that easy. Um, let's see here. If uh, Michael, uh, I don't know if you're at work or not. So I don't know if any of you guys have questions. And if you don't, that's okay too. Um, so I'll leave this up for just a little bit longer. If you guys have any questions, we'll come back to that. Because um, I did not check to see if anybody was going to have any today. Right here is our calendar. Um, you can check out our calendar to see what is happening with us, um, where we're going to be, um, wine and dine, all that kind of stuff. Our webinars, make sure you check out our webinars. Go on there. Um, all this stuff is on C2CREIA.com. Right up there are our podcasts. You can check out all our past podcasts, our message line. That's 888-570-7464.
888-570-7464. If you have any questions about anything, you can go ahead and leave a message on our message line and then we will get back to you or we will play it on the radio and answer your question. It's that easy. Um, all right, what else here? We've got our uh, live line that you can call in Monday through Friday at 10 to 11. That's 760-931-1604. You can connect with us. You can also push this little banner right here. When you push play between 10 and 11, it'll take you right to the radio station. There's our motivational videos, our radio shows, and then you can also download the book right there. And this is, uh, oh, let's see, we have our assisted living facilities. You guys can go check those out. Acquisitions in Action in Atlanta. Um, that one went awesome. We're going to be doing another one uh, pretty soon as well. Here is all of our information for calling into the radio show as well. The book and the 21 day challenge. Um, all right, guys, let's see. Do you have any questions? If you do, I would love to go over them. And if you don't, that's okay too, because I'm pretty hungry and I could go eat. I'm, my, my week in KC was amazing, Mike. We, um, we went to, uh, last week we went to KC for the Got Money, Need Money Expo, which was awesome. There's about 350 people there. Um, we had a shark tank, which was pretty cool because, uh, two deals got funded out of it. Um, as well as ours didn't get funded on it because there were 19 properties in, I'm sorry, there were 86 properties in 19 different States. But afterwards, um, two people came up and wanted, uh, to fund the deals. And so we're now in the research part with them. Uh, so they just needed a little bit more information before they could pull the trigger, which is awesome because had we not gone, we would not have these deals funded right now. Um, and you're talking about 2.4 million all in uh, with rehabs and then a 3.5 million uh, sale price. So borrowing the money at like uh, 10 and a half percent, that's pretty awesome. Um, I see a lot of really positive things going on. So uh, we did that. Then we did the, the thought leadership conference after that, which was pretty cool because we talked about the industry. We talked about training. We talked about, you know, what could we do to improve it and how do we get it to, to be better? And how do we improve the industry, including possibly coming up with a rating system for gurus um, and talking about what ones are good and what ones are bad and why and, and having them actually submit to the process so that we would um, basically survey random people in their, in their program to find out how they did. And so that, that way we're getting kind of a random, obviously we can't call everybody and then some people are going to hate it. Some people are going to love it. So what we want to do is kind of find that medium and find out, you know, what is it? Is it really good? Sometimes people don't get along with people. You never really know, right? But there are good trainers like Eddie Speed is a good trainer um, and has good content. So uh, anyways, with that, let's see, we've got Michael Wetterman. I'm going to go ahead and unmute you, bud. You're unmuted. Hey, how's it going, Pete? Good, man. How are you doing? Not too bad. Um, you know, it was kind of funny. I, I was listening to you before, you know, and, and you started off with uh, consistency. Um, you know, yesterday, this week was a very difficult week for me, just, you know, uh, work-wise and, and uh, emotional-wise. And it was very tough. But the one thing that I was able to do is stay consistent. I could write my goals every day. Um, even I didn't want to write my goals every day. I mean, I had to force myself many a time this week. Um, you know, just, just to get them done. But, you know, how did that make you feel? There's real strength in it. You know, um, you know, I still feel really stressed out. I still don't feel right, you know, physically, but, you know, but like, for example, last night with the goals did, I, I've been working out every day for pretty much the last month. Okay. And last night I had no desire to do pushups. Uh, I had no desire. I waited myself out, basically. I It took me three hours to motivate myself <laughs> enough to do the damn push-ups. I mean, but, okay. but I write that goal down every day. That goal is written down every day that I want to lose 50 pounds, and that's in my head. It wouldn't let me go to sleep. So basically, I lost out on three hours of sleep, but I had to do it. And so you actually I, got up and did them, and then, were able, and then you were able to go to sleep. Right. Man. So I mean... So, I mean, that's, that's the power of writing your goals is, is even though you don't want to do it, there's just something that it's in your head that you have to kind of fight the inner demons within, but. Absolutely. You know, but see, if, if you want to lose weight, 
you've got to consistently work out. It isn't about just working out once. It's, you know what I mean? So what you were doing is fighting through the hard times to get the results. The results became more important to you than right now. And that is awesome. Thanks. Yeah, it, it is. And it's, it's a great thing. And everybody just, just writing it down, it, it makes it attainable. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Anything else that's happened to you over the last week um, about with writing your goals down or anything else? Uh, no, I mean, realistically, like I said, it was a tough week. Um, but, you know, I just feel stronger at the end of it. Um, I feel like today I got a lot of stuff done that I wanted to get done. Um, so yeah, I just have to find that window. You what know, what were some of the fun. challenges that you had last week? Uh, you know, like I had a personal thing where, you know, uh, you know, my my wife wasn't feeling well, so that was a perfect, you know, a thing. I wasn't feeling, I was sick as a dog. And I have to, you know, you know, I have to work 12-hour shifts, overnight right. shifts a lot of time. So I mean, it it, it just really wore down on me. And but How do you get past okay. something like that? How well, you know, when you when you're working a lot, right? And your wife doesn't feel good and you don't feel good, that can definitely cause stress on a relationship, right? So right. when when two people aren't in a great mood, how is it that you work through that? And I wonder if you were writing down, I communicate with my wife um, extraordinary, or I, I have extraordinary communication with my wife and we get along. I have extraordinary communication with my wife and we get along. I wonder if you were writing that down every day, uh, if that some, would yeah, change similar, all time. I, I wrote I wrote, I love my wife and son more each day. I try to be the best father and husband I can be. See, that's, that's great too, man. So now, so does that play on your head, right? So she's in a bad mood and you want to snap or get upset. And then you think about that goal going, man, okay, I wrote that I'm the best husband. I, the best husband I could be wouldn't act like this right now. So I, I, I if I want to become that husband, that means I, I, I have to act differently, right? Right. And Absolutely. I think that's the cool part is, and it's really kind of what I, what I'm, what I always try and say to you guys is that it's not about, you, you know, you've got to become the person that you want to be to become the person that you want to be and writing your goals is part of that. And, and what you're saying is by you writing those goals, it keeps it on the front of your mind so that when that type of situation presents itself, you have the opportunity to shatter who you are for who you want to become. Yep, absolutely. I like that saying. Anyways, and I just I, wanted to fit that you. in because it seemed you really know, but, perfect. But thank you, Pete, for for uh, you know doing this, and it, it really has changed a lot of aspects. Uh, thank you, man. Me, so I appreciate it. You got it, bud. Thank you very much, Michael. If any of you other guys have any questions at all, all you got to do is raise your hand, and I can answer them. Otherwise, we will be um, ending. If you guys are too shy and you want to write it down, you can write it down too. But with that, I'm starving. Um, so I think I'm going to go and have, have dinner. Did you guys have fun tonight? I guess that's another question. Did you guys have a good time? I hope so. Um, you're welcome, Mike. Have a great night, buddy. Um, but anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, thank you for tuning in tonight. I, I hope that tonight's message was clear. It's all about consistency. When you start living your life with consistency, when you start realizing that in order to become the person you want to become, you have to change and become the person that you want to become. That when you write down your goals, that gives you the opportunity to shatter who you are for who you want to become. Guys, thank you so much for listening to me tonight because without you, there is no us. You put the why in our success. Have a great night and go make something happen. Bye, guys.